Hello internet people. In this video, I'll show you how to make your website convert better with a tool called Hotjar. And by conversion, I mean it can be an e-commerce sale or email signups or even affiliate link clicks. It's really up to you how you use this tool. With this tool, you'll be able to make actual user recordings like this. So you can see what the user does on the website. Or you can just create heat maps like this. Or maybe you want to ask a quick questionnaire like this. The best part is Hotjar has a free plan to get you started. But just don't tell your users you're doing this, otherwise they'll act like this. Why are you running? Why are you running? Tip sweat punch. All right, and here is Hotjar and this is the dashboard. And from here, you can go to different kinds of research tools. So for example, at the top, we have heat maps. We're going to look into those in a second. Then you have screen recordings, super useful. Then you have funnels. This is pretty much like a same thing as Google. In Google Analytics, you have goals. So you can set up certain goals per page, and then it creates a nice funnel out of it. Then you have forms, and this is useful if you have, for example, a sign up form, and you want to improve the conversion there you can actually set it up so that you see where people drop off. If there's some issues with um, some questions you have or they don't get how to enter their name or whatever, you can see it in there. Then you have the feedback tools, which is all incoming. This is more of a, a smiley face. Was this experience good or not? Then you have polls, which are open-ended questions, or you can actually have also radio buttons. So you select, it's a question with multiple choices to select from. And then you have your surveys, which are a bit longer actual surveys that you know, people need to think about, maybe five to 10 minutes. Enough talk. So let's just take a look at the recordings. I use this one probably the most. And if I look here, I have some recordings from past week. So if I click on play here, you'll see it'll open up a new page. And here, okay, this was useless. Let's take a look at next recording. So for example, here, you can see that this is a user actually using this site and going back and forth. Okay, so they didn't do anything here. Let's go further. And please note, this is double speed now and I'm skipping pauses. So they actually do things. They click on buy now, for example. But you see now it's loading for some time nothing happened and you see this is a problem so for example here I already see that maybe I have a bug on my site because this user is actually clicking on buy now but nothing is happening so obviously they're gonna leave this is a really good example for that so here they actually made it to the checkout page but it seemed quite hard to do anything before that and Basically, this tool is great to spotting any issues with your website, with usability, um, because you actually can see what the people, how they use it. Now, the drawback of this tool is that it takes a lot of time to go through these recordings. You can record about 100 at a time. It takes time to actually analyze them, to go through them all. Don't worry, it still takes less time than Neymar rolling. This is probably me, so I'm gonna skip it. So the drawback is actually that it takes a long time to go through this, but if you put in the time, you will get a lot of great insights from this tool. How people use it, where they get stuck. For example, here, they didn't do anything. Then you just skip it. There's nothing you can do with this one. Some are more useful than the others. Um, these people came from ads, so it might be that their motivation is quite low. They just came to check out so here, this user is a bit more engaged. You can see they'll stay about three minutes on the side. They're reading the content, they're scrolling. And this is still double the speeds, just so that um, you save a bit of time. You don't need to be so fast. And when you click on the skip pauses, you'll just skip wherever the user paused. So here, they're kind of not doing anything, but then you can speed up this stuff. So 
I really recommend this tool if you have a landing page or pages that are very similar to each other. You'll learn so much just by looking at what your users are actually doing in your site. And also you'll discover if there's any bugs on your site. Arnie, what do you do to bugs? Bugs. See them driven before you? And they hear a lamentation of the women. Let's next take a look at the heat maps. These are quite interesting also. If you click on heat maps, and I have one recording here. It's not the same page you just saw, but it doesn't matter. So if I click on it, you'll see this view. Uh, right now I only have 42 page views. The recommendation is that you have about a thousand, but if you can't make it, okay, 500, 400, that's when it starts to get a bit better. So just keep in mind that you need a lot of data to also utilize this. But just so that you know how this looks like, you see all this balls is actually where people are clicking. So for some reason, some people try to click on comments, also on the logo itself. And then obviously they're gonna click a lot on this link. This is the main link to go to the services. Um, I have a lazy loading on the site, so the tool doesn't know what to do with it. So it just loads, that, that's fine. Here is my table of contents. You see that people clicked on this. And for me already, I can see, okay, uh, they want to see the comparison and also just jump into the activating Namecheap SSL. And so on. This article is quite long, but you can see from here how many people click and what they clicked on. So for example, here they're clicking on pick positive SSL multi-domain. So one person click on it. Maybe I should make it into a link. No shit. What's cool about heat maps, you also have this scroll. And scroll is just the amount of people that scroll to a certain point. So for example, here, if I look, this is 100%. Red is 100% and then little by little, they start to drop off, right? So about here, this is the fold. So about here, already 50% are gone. For some pages, it's, it's okay. For some pages, it's way too much. So for example, if this is your checkout page that 50% uh, off, just below the fold, that's bad. Unless there's a CTA here that takes them somewhere else already, but that's a different story. And there you see less and less people. So for example, here I have my YouTube video loaded. So I would assume most people would stop here and watch it. Um, so, and then it just continues. Less and less and less people. So just as an example, in ideal world, your heat map should look like something like this, where it's nice and gradual. There's no abrupt changes in color. So you see it goes from red to yellow to green and to blue. This kind of ideal way, because there's no way you can get all users to read everything. So this is how you want to see it. The thing is, what you don't want to see is like this, where you have a lot of red at first and then abrupt yellow. So that means a lot of people leave at this point. Then it's kind of some people read it and then again abrupt. So you see it goes from green to blue just like that. It means a lot of people don't even see this one. So this is what you want to avoid. So if you have this situation, you need to try to analyze what's going on. Why are users dropping off? Is it because the design looks like it? The page stops there or maybe it's just the content is not relevant to the user. You want them to be glued to screen like this. <laughs> hey, if you like this video so far, I would appreciate if you can hit the like button. That would help me a lot. Thanks. So it's just another tool for you to analyze your website. Now you have this move, but I'm not a big fan of it. I, I don't think it's very useful. I mean, okay, if they moved here, uh, is it really useful? It's a bit hard to get, gather any data from this. Like, what are you going to do with this? They're just scrolling here, so it's normal, right? So I would just skip this report. But the other two, they're quite useful. Just remember to have enough uh, data for them. And let's take a look at another cool feature that I really like is the polls. And this is a way for you to actually ask the, your users. So if I go to my website, and you see here, this thing will pop up. I've set it to pop up after 30 seconds and uh, it's already done it. I just don't want you to wait for it. And it's super simple here. It asks you a question, then the user answers. Let's say uh, it's too expensive. 
and then next and then you can also have multiple choice questions here what's your biggest fear or concern about purchasing from us uh price and then next and that's it you're already done with it so it's a super quick way to just see what people think don't make it too complicated it has to be very quick easy for users to fill it in and don't spend too much time on it otherwise you end up like this guy all my calculations are wrong even in my dreams and if you want to take a look in the back end so this is the same questionnaire i haven't run it at all it's just here for test if i go in it you'll see it's super easy to set up you give it a name then you set up the questions and the cool thing is there's a question bank so you can already use some some questions that are formulated in a way that tries to get more users to answer it so you can look up these questions or maybe you have your own and that's completely okay you can update here and then you can also adjust the appearance a little bit but because i'm on the free account i can't hide the hot jar branding but to be honest on my blog that's completely fine and then you can also target so for example i've disabled it for phones just because i find it a bit too annoying on the phone if something pops up but again up to you uh, you can also set up where the questionnaire comes up so for example this one is only on this page you can set it for the whole site or maybe you have a checkout and on a thank you page you want to ask what was the best part of your experience or whatever so super flexible in that sense the only thing here is because we're using free account you can't really specify some attributes but you do get the chance to set some behavior so this is when the poll will launch so either it's immediately after a certain amount of seconds this when user is about to abandon the page this only works for desktop so usually it's just that the user starts scrolling up here and then the, the pop-up will come up a bit like this guy's comeback ah, you sent me you monkey marry me and you see here when user scrolls down halfway down the page so you have a bit of options here to choose from personally i like the delay one or uh immediately depends on the page and you can set how many times the user will see it and then you can also if you get a poll response you can forward that to your email but honestly i don't think that's super useful let's take a look at how it looks like when you get answers and you'll see all the responses like this so i have two questions and i have two answers here as well and once you have enough answers you will see a word cloud for opening the questions but right now it's just one word so it's not very useful and here you'll have some graphs all right so those three features i think are the most useful in hotjar i really love them uh, the other features are useful to some people but i haven't found as much use for them on my website or at my work but in general i love hotjar in general hotjar is quite affordable you can get the plus plan for like 29 dollars you can see it here and you can track 10,000 page views per day with that one and most of all you just don't have any feature limitations i think they're also quite affordable if you want to go for the pro one but the free account gets you quite far as well and obviously it's it's free it's free it's free it's free real estate and to install hotjar it's super simple they have really good guides on their site i'll leave the link in the description so check it out but basically all you need to do is follow these steps so for example if you're using wordpress they have step by step with the video it, it's easy one thing i would do want to mention you need to sign up first for hotjar no credit cards needed or anything like that because you can just sign up for the free account and one thing you'll need is here if you go once you've signed up and you go to dashboard and then here you can see you need to select your site or organization settings and then here you have the tracking code so basically this is what you need to install and uh, either you need this or you will need this it depends on what method you're going to choose but as mentioned hotjar's website is really great they have uh, very easy to follow steps here and for example for wordpress it you you, you get it up and running in like a five minutes because you can just install a plugin or put it in your head tags 
And that's it. I'm a big fan of hot jar and I use it daily at my work and a bit of on my personal side. But to be honest, what about you? Do you use this kind of tools? Is it useful for you? Please let me know in the comments below. My name is Robert and if this is your first time here and you want to learn more about how to improve your website, get more traffic and other website related stuff, make sure to hit that subscribe Ding button dong. so you don't miss out on anything. Here are two videos that I think you should watch next. Whoosh!